All right, it looks like we uh, still need one more member for quorum. Um, but since it is 1130, I will start going through our um, I guess preamble and uh, procedures. And hopefully by the time we're done with that, we'll have enough members for quorum and can get started with call to order. So this is the, um, what's the date? Uh, October 3rd meeting of the Historic Ohio City Design Review Advisory Committee um, regarding the virtual meeting regulations and procedures. The meeting shall be conducted according to Robert's Rules of Order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by a roll call vote. Recusal due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to the start of any presentation. The recused committee member will then leave the meeting for the duration of the case discussion. The chair will then call the meeting to order and ask for a roll call of the committee. The administrator will introduce the first project. The meeting will then be turned over to the applicant to proceed through their presentation. Each presentation should be completed prior to questions and comments from the committee. Once a presentation has concluded, the administrator will provide background information if applicable and read any received comments. The committee will then begin deliberations of project review. Please use the raise hand feature if you'd like to speak. After deliberations and review concludes, the committee will render its recommendation and or motion. The applicant may leave the meeting at any point after their project review is complete. Uh, all projects will follow the same format until all projects have been heard by the committee. And then once all projects are heard, the chair will call for any committee slash administrative reports. And after all reports have been heard, the chair will adjourn the meeting. Regarding community comments, any and all community members may provide their written comments, thoughts, or questions regarding projects presented to the committee. Community, committee administra community administrators may also, I'm sorry, community members may also telephone their comments or questions to the committee administrator. All comments, thoughts, or questions must be submitted to the committee administrator no later than 48 hours prior to the start of the meeting. Uh, public comment received after the deadline will not be heard by the committee. Public comment will be collected by Landmark staff and sent to the committee members for review prior to the scheduled meeting. Landmark staff will also summarize any received comments during the meeting. The applicant of the project is under no obligation to answer any committee community questions. Community members are invited to attend the design review advisory committee meetings, but there will be no open public comment period. Um, all projects are being reviewed using the Secretary of the Interior's standards for rehabilitation and are being considered for the issuance of a certificate of appropriateness. All projects are considered on a case by case basis. And the Historic Ohio City Design Review Advisory Committee makes recommendations to the Cleveland Landmarks Commission. Recommendations are not final actions. Depending on the scope of the project, submissions may be approved administratively or will need to be reviewed by the Cleveland Landmarks Commission. Projects will be scheduled at the next available commission meeting after an action is taken. Um, so with that, it, uh, it appears we have quorum now. So Madam Chair, if you'd like to call to order and ask for a roll call. Um, great calling. Um, today's Historic Ohio City Design Review Advisory Committee meeting to order. Dan, please call the roll. Ms. Anderson? Here. Ms. Flaherty? Here. Mr. Frondorf? Ms. Lan? Here. Mr. Miller? Mr. Persons? Mr. Bertale? Here. Mr. Trevisano? Here. And Mr. Marinucci? Here. Uh, Madam Chair, we have quorum. Um, so with that, uh, we should be able to move on to case number HOC 24-25, 3508 Woodbine Avenue. This is um, for a rehabilitation you guys saw as a concept schematic um, on August 15th. Uh, after that, it went to Landmarks for comments and review. Um, staff had actually made the recommendation that if it seemed ready to seek final approval at that point, um, the commission, I guess, had uh, some stronger feelings about it than the local committee did. So, um, very curious to hear uh, what your guys' opinions are of the project now. But with that, uh, we've got Paul Began 
and Susan Broadwater here from Vegan Architectural Designs. Hey Dan, I have to recuse, so Phil will be um, chairing. Great, and I thank will you. See you guys soon. Yeah, Paul. Uh, yeah, let me know when you want me to switch through slides. Sure. Otherwise, uh... thank you, Dan, uh, and 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 thank you, committee, uh, for seeing us again. Um, I, I this is probably a first for me that I've been approved by a committee and then had to come back to that committee again after we've been approved. Uh, but I guess there's a first time for everything. Um, this is a project on Woodbine. Um, if you recall from the last time we presented uh, to you. Uh, this house is at the way back of an L shaped lot. Uh, originally, this uh, parcel had uh, a house on the front portion of the lot, and um, this uh, house is, it was to the back, um, just so that you have a little bit of a lay of the land. Uh, there, there's a large uh, uh, kind of commercial uh, building brick uh, directly next door. Um, and uh, to the uh, north of the site is a park um, uh, right there. Uh, we can go to the next slide, Dan. Thank you. So, wanted to include some site context photos as well as the historic photo that we were able to uh, gain uh, uh, from this. Um, as you can see, it's it's a little bit difficult to see the house at the back of the lot, especially with the tree that's on, on the front. Obviously, in the winter, that's going to be a little bit different. We'll be able to see through there a little bit better. Um, but uh, at request of uh, um, Landmarks, too, wanted to see a little bit more on the back side as well, too. So we do have some pictures from the, the park. You could see it's very well wooded and landscape right adjacent to the property. Yes. Thank you, Dan. Those are the two photos on the lower right right there. Uh, and then again, the photo on the upper left is down into the site there. So you can actually see what uh, the existing uh, structure is right now. Uh, it is um, not in a great shape right now. Um, it, it uh, you know, it, it has a structure it's been completely gutted on the inside. There's some structural concerns uh, with the with the roof uh, and the framing and the foundation for this particular building. Uh, but the good news is that uh, our current, uh, the owners of the, the building and our client um, are intending to um, uh, renovate this, this house. We can go to the next one, Dan. So uh, brought the, the um, renderings up at the front because Generally, I think we end up talking a lot more about these. Um, so, uh, different from last time, let me go through some of those pieces, parts, uh, so that you can under, understand. Uh, landmark, we had a uh, trim board uh, that was horizontal that kind of wrapped around the entirety of the building, um, front and back side, uh, that was kind of horizontal in alignment with uh, where our uh, porch line is. Um, the Landmarks Commission was uh, more concerned about the, you know, making sure we maintain the vertical integrity of the original structure. Um, uh, and that, that trim board uh, kind of took away from that. So we did remove that um, from the, the, the front and again, the place that's visible is between the, the, the two building portions uh, and the sides in the back uh, for this. Um, Another thing that changed uh, from last time we presented to you is the size and spacing of the windows on the ground floor. Uh, we had a few uh, locations where we actually um, had two windows kind of gang together. Um, the Landmarks Commission thought that better to keep more in alignment with what the original house was uh, and just have sing single windows in there, which we did modify and comply with. Um, I think the bigger uh, issue from landmarks, which we did not change uh, and this time around, and this is really more from the programming uh, uh, side of how this um, house works on the inside, as well as addressing the, the front entry piece, 
is landmarks. Uh, there were some comments about, you know, trying to maintain the uh, vertical nature of the existing front gable piece. Um, if you recall, the existing piece that's on the front now is failing. Uh, the foundation underneath there uh, is, uh, you know, rubble stone that's, you know, 120, maybe even more years. Uh, and that all needs to come down and be replaced. A large part of the structural problems we have are with that street. So that entire front um, gable piece that projects kind of out of the main body of the house is going to be replaced. And in replacing it, um, we are uh, looking at moving the front door uh, over to the side, which is going to be more visible from the front of the street um, and doing um, uh, a shift on the, the second floor. What we did to accommodate the concerns about addressing the, the maintaining the verticality of that piece, though, was to um, change the um, uh, uh, trim and the columns of that so that it reads more as a cohesive uh, whole piece, uh, even though we do have the negative components uh, building wise that we're uh, bringing that piece together as, as one piece to express that kind of verticality of that piece uh, to it. Um, I think uh, other than that too, also we did have a uh, shake style siding in the gable ends, uh, which we thought brought another level of detail to this project. The uh, Landmarks Commission thought that uh, that was a, a, a a little bit too much detail for for this house that needed to be uh, a little bit more subdued. Uh, so we did go back and remove the that and and put in uh, horizontal signing up at the the top of the end gable pieces um, on both of those. So those are the the changes that we have made uh, from last time. Just so they understand what uh, at least in my recollection with with the landmarks commission comments were and what we changed to modify the design uh, and address those. We can go to the next one, Dan. Actually, we gotta go through them kind of quickly. Here's the, the, the siding that we're looking at um, and, the, and our color scheme in our windows. Um, you saw these last time, we did not change those. We can go to the next one, Dan. Uh, floor plan wise, just so you understand what we're doing, living floor on the, the, first, the first floor. Um, and then uh, the next slide, I think, is what we're showing on the second floor uh, as far as our bedroom floor and the way that the, the uh, this kind of comes comes together on the second floor. Um, okay, we can go to the last one. And I, uh, I think oh, this is just elevations. Uh, so you can just see a little bit more uh, as far as the details goes. I think the renderings do. Um, Show a little bit more detail, but I think it's good to have these so you can see the massing a, a little bit clearer. And then our last slide, Dan, is our site plan. Um, and we bring this up only because, although it's not part of this presentation, I uh, do want the committee to understand um, a likely future phase is going to be putting a garage in the front yard of a house. So I know that is a little bit foreign. Uh, to this uh, to this neighborhood, um, but as the existing house is at the back of the lot, there's really no other location. Again, historically, there was another house uh, at this um, thing at at this location on the site. So, what we will be doing um, with this is actually turning it into uh, looking more like a, a small carriage house on the front. So, it's going to be backwards. We would enter the garage from the back side. And then on the front side, we would put a front uh, porch, uh, put an entry door into there. Whether or not that gets programmed with actually some uh, uh, living space on the, the second floor is yet to be determined. But I just wanted the committee to understand that um, the way that the site layout is going to be down the road is to maintaining where the current driveway is now, maintaining the visibility to where the front door is located on the main structure, um, and that uh, we will have an, another structure uh, that is going to address the street um, at a future phase. 
So I think that's it. I'm not sure what the best one to go back to the elevations or the renderings uh, as as a uh, wait and look forward to your questions and comments. Uh, thank you, Paul. Um, I'm going to open it up to the committee for comments. I'll, I'll go. No. Paul, I only have one comment, um, but it's a, a sticking point because this is on the park. The back siding, uh, my strong recommendation is hardy and not vinyl. Uh, just because if this was the back of the house and was on the front of the street, uh, we'd probably I'd probably be fine with it. But because it, it's right there on the park in the historic district, I don't think vinyl on the back is appropriate. Other than that, I think you're doing a really nice job restoring this house. I thank the owners. And when you come back to put the garage up, that, that plan seems fine with me. So again, it's just the materiality. But it's it's a sticky point for me. Thank you, Alex. Yep. More comments? I can, I, I'm just going to second what Alex said. We, we've we seen this, this project already and the materials were vinyl. And I think we asked that it um, be changed. And um, so I'm just hoping that we finally get there at this point as we move forward. So that's, that's it for me. I don't have the same issues that Landmarks does um, in terms with um, maintaining the exact elevations. Um, especially if, if it's in disrepair, so I, I, I'm not going to touch that, but, but yeah, the vinyl, um, especially with the proximity to the park, I think really needs to be, um, upgraded. That's all. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, yeah, Paul, I'm, uh, I'm in an agreement with, uh, the previous 2, uh, members of the committee. Did you change the, the height of the gable? of the in the front looks like it's so, a bit taller yeah so um and i think i did present that we didn't change it since the last time we presented to you so the existing roof structure um is where where it is right now um is kind of failing because the the top plate um is it's at a weird location and there are not any cross ties. So what has been happening is the front walls and the back walls have been being pushed out um, quite a bit. Uh, and also too, if you note where, again, a little bit difference here, if you note where the roof line is on the existing facade compared to the windows, right? Um, you will see that the top plate actually runs in line with the header for those windows, uh, which is yeah. uh, just a little over six feet. So, as we try to figure out the structural components to this, to make this roof work, we know we're going to have to raise those walls so that we can get an appropriate uh, top plate height so that we can connect them front to back with our ceiling joists uh, to, to prevent those walls from blowing out any further. So, yes, part of this project is uh, replacing the, the, the roof structure um, and as doing so, you know, modifying the, the slope of that roof uh, a, a bit as well. Okay, uh, it sounds like you have your work cut out for you. Um, so I really don't have anything else. Does anybody else in the committee have anything? I'll just, uh, Angelo here, uh, concur with the last three commenters and just add the final one that I actually think adding a shingled um, gable would be lovely. I think that'd be a, a nice kind of chef's kiss to this project. And I don't in any way think that it would be inconsistent with the architectural and decorative patterns found throughout this entire district. So okay. I would, I would give a thumbs up to that without hesitation. Um, I don't know if others feel the same way, but obviously we're changing substantially so much of this house to leave so much to, to leave such a prominent part. Basic. I, I I don't I don't see I don't see what the what the uh, concern is I, I like understand the comment but I think it's a little bit specific. I, I think all. I think I'm gonna have Angelo come with me when we go to Landmarks. <laughs> Absolutely not, but happy to share yeah. my opinion. <laughs>
Um, anybody else? Um, and if not, is can someone make a motion? I won't be able to do it. Yeah, if no one else has any comments. Um, I'll make a motion to approve conditioned on the materiality on the sides in the back being party and not vinyl. Do you have a second? Second. And Dan, can you call? Good thing. Uh, Ms. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Flaherty? Mr. Frandorf? Yes. Ms. Lamb? Yes. Uh, Mr. Trupistano? Yes. And Mr. Taylor? Yes. Right, Mr. Chairman, uh, motion passes unanimously. Uh, all we will see you guys at Landmarks next week. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. See you next right. time. Thank you. Um, so I think Nia can join us back now uh, for case HOC 24-29. Uh, it's a concept slash schematic review at 1768 Fulton Road uh, for some new construction. Uh, looks like we've got Harold Smith here and, and maybe a couple other people from um, from their team. So yeah, if you guys want to go through your presentation, just let me know and you'd like me to switch slides. Um, and as a reminder, um, I guess more for our presenters than the committee, because you guys know this well, since this is a concept schematic review, there's no motion taken, no action taken. You just get feedback from the committee. And then uh, next week you'll go to Landmarks Commission, get feedback from them, kind of finalize your design, and then come back to this committee for final recommendations to the commission. So with that, it's all yours. And you seem to be uh, muted, Harold. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Hi, fantastic. Um, Harold Smith here, um, uh, principal of Kentucky Design Studios. I have Jen here joining me. Uh, she's our co lead designer. Uh, what we're presenting is a, um, a new build, new construction um, off of um, Fulton, at Fulton Road. Um, 1768 Fulton. Uh, we are, it's an interesting lot. Uh, we have a existing rear house at the, uh, at the rear and we're infilling kind of a, um, open area lot sitting between, uh, two existing homes. If we go to, uh, slide two, um, uh, here we're showing, um, kind of like neighboring homes. Um, one of the last things we just talked about with ANC. It's really kind of building and addressing um, kind of the architecture in this existing space. Um, our approach was to kind of review and see all the different eclectic architecture and see how we can kind of pull this idea together. Since we're not dealing with an existing space, existing home, we're dealing with a brand new build and how can we actually express this language with, you know, a today's build. Um, so our neighboring home, we have a gable roof. Our adjoining home, we have kind of a, uh, Victorian porch home. If you go to the next slide, uh, we have kind of an industrialized space with last slide, and uh, then that joins us very residential last sliding. But one of the things that we saw trends here is like the whole street is very eclectic. It's quite eclectic neighborhood. The styles are quite different. You have flat roofs, you have gable roofs, you have industrial st industrial kind of storefronts um, as homes. Um, if you slide to the next slide. Um, and then we're directly across, we have, I believe, a residential home that is, I believe it was in a, a other restaurant or something of that nature. Um, and so this is something that we really kind of took into account of figuring out how to make our residential home, to a uh, town home, something that would fit within this context. And, um, not just be stressed something completely overly overt modern. Um, if we go to the next slide, um, I'll talk about a little bit of site plan um, and then I'll get into the last statement I just made. Um, when we looked at a site plan, we wanted to utilize um, the existing drive aisle that we have here. Keep, this, keep the homes that sit, keep our homes adjacent with the neighboring homes as best as possible without the, store, without the, um, 
the porch front. The porch front, we actually want to give more green space to that area than we had, um, that, that we've seen before. Um, and then we also want to break the roof line up just a tad bit. And so that's kind of how we come up with the concept we developed here on the site plan. If we go to the next slide. Um, actually, let's get past the S1, the next one, please. Yeah, that's how we kind of came up. We looked at a gable roof here, elongated windows, and then an approach to our, um, store, our, our front patio. Our front patio, we kind of liked it being recessed in, kind of give our covers that we we're looking for. Um, and then the roof line, I think, is kind of appropriate for at least the neighboring area. Um, and then we started looking at kind of our materiality of how to best address each space. As we know, like the brick is something very pronounced and we're kind of going back and forth on that. And we thought that actually be suitable for this area and for this particular build um, that are joining with a vertical lat sliding. Um, at the baseline, if you look at this and if there's an isometric, I believe on the next slide here. Oh, okay. Um, and the, and the, at the base here, we're now cladding our kind of Hung and groove paneling like right here, which we have another influence of it. And so what we thought was we have these kind of vertical elements that would really accentuate the height of the space, which I think the neighboring home does really, really nicely. And we kind of wanted to join that in this articulation. Um, and then we were looking at, we wanted to do, we still want to use a bit of modern building construction. So instead of, um, you know, just standard shingles, we we're looking at metal shingles, but metal, um, but not the standing seam metal, but metal shingles that actually look like shingles themselves. We thought it'd be a nice complement to the actual building and the area where it's at, but still kind of the modern construction ability for it. Same with our siding. Our siding is more of a hardy group rather than a wood group because hardies obviously are more sustainable, but we're still looking at or doing either a lat roof siding to kind of complement the, the neighboring areas. Um, and that goes with our, our base siding at the base. We're also looking at like a tongue and groove a pine there that getting complimentary to our area. Um, we split the roof line up because we wanted to give more green space and a green garden to that space. And that's what you see as that, that divider here. That's going to be a green garden that we're creating for the, um, for the property itself. Um, if you go to the, uh, I think the next one are the perspectives. Yeah. Here's a perspective of our street front views. Um, we thought the overall aligned pretty well with the, neighboring homes, we kind of see like it nestled, but yet it does has this unique identity. But I don't think it's, we didn't believe it was so overt to where it didn't fit within its context. Um, and then I think the last phase, which we did add some more slides, but I, th I think the, this last one is a front view. Our front view just shows kind of how it sits within the neighboring homes. Um, it's set back it's just a tad. Um, the entry is set back a tad. And I think we kind of tucked over our, we gave a little bit of overhang for the second floor because we tucked it in so that we can have a little bit more room for our drive out. It is a bit tight there. So as a quick dress, that's kind of like the overall concept for it. We are looking for as much feedback as we can for the landmark and see where you guys, how you guys feel our concept is and what adjustments you may be looking for. Um, and if I can jump in just, just real quick Please. before the committee gets to it. Um, I just wanted to point out that uh, the building directly to the, I guess, like northeast of this, the um, kind of gothic cottage, which you can kind of see in this first one. I think the first slide, this one here, I guess there's a tree yeah. right in front of it, but yeah, the, ho the home that once stood here appears to have been a twin to this one. Um, similar gable lines and there were some additions of, of porches and that sort of thing before it was torn down in, um, I think the, 80s or 90s uh, but so this the the form of this sort of matches the form of its next door neighbor so a lot of references to what was once there um i was kind of curious if you guys were aware of that since you went with the vertical siding which um is appropriate for the the house next door um you know and we don't see a lot of it in the neighborhood but here it, it might make more sense than a lot of places so i was curious if that was Something we you guys were aware of, or we weren't aware actually. No, we were not. We just kind of yeah. saw the gabling, and we thought that was fitting for the the height and the scale for it. It's kind of how we approached it. Mm -hmm. cool. um, with that, I'll be quiet and let the committee talk. <laughs> Thank you, Harold. Um, <clears throat> I will start if 
my colleagues don't mind. Um, I think, I mean, that's a great happy accident because I feel like the massing and verticality, um, I really like it, uh, especially obviously in relation to the house next door and the idea that it could be a kind of modern interpretation of what was once there is um, very um, charming. Uh, I think I, I really um, overall think you, you know, when we look at new construction in the district, we are looking for kind of compatibility and like scale massing window rhythm style um, while also making sure that it's distinctly modern and I, or not modern, but distinctly new construction. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I do think you've struck a great balance here. Um, I think um, both again, like what Dan said, when the, the vertical material a being a nice um, complement to the historic, even if it's not necessarily common in our district, it is obviously next door and it's, and it's appropriate for this emulating that. Um, and I get the gable, um, I think is, you've nailed it. And then the only thing I really think um, I would love to see on this is, and I'm, I'm actually okay with the elongated, more modern window style and the window rhythm itself, not necessarily mimicking. I do wish there was some glazing on like the ground level, like, so where you have the Chicago brick, which I do again, love you. You've taken interpretations of yeah. materials that are very appropriate for the district and applied it in a way that makes sense on the massing and is interesting. I just would love the glazing to get a little lower. Um, and I'm not sure I could see obviously what you have in your floor plans. And I don't know if that means a little rejigging or if, you know, others don't feel as strongly um, something that is, I would say, missing of this, which I'm sure I wouldn't be surprised if you hear this from landmarks, given my own experience just last week, <laughs> a few weeks ago, some uh, presenting a new construction is that there's no porch and porches are a common element throughout the neighborhood. And I think that while I feel that this project doesn't need a porch per se, perhaps getting the glazing a little lower will give that inviting kind of a neighborhood connectivity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. that's really, um, I think it's great sighting. I think it's great massing. I love the um, material you've chosen and the intentional kind of connection behind that. So. That's all. Just, I think the glazing could could be. Yeah, so it's something that we can Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. I mean, I know anyone else, but who's next? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I um had a couple of comments kind of echo what Neo was saying as far as the massing, the color choices. Um, I don't know if I'm necessarily married to the brick that's in the front right now. Um, I, I feel like even what is it? The brick building next to it is a little bit of a darker uh shade of red um i had a, a couple questions um and i guess this would be for your next uh presentation maybe some photos of what's happening in the back um and how that sort of relates to um how that kind of relates to the sort of new building going on there um the it looks like there's only about a like maybe a six inch step up to the first to the front door. And I'm not sure it sounds like you're maybe gonna need some variances. Like if you I don't know if you guys have looked at the townhouse code much. I, it starts with, you know, kind of the 18 or I think it's like 24 inch um to like your front door to keep it off the street. Um I think there may be some questions about down the road, some questions about um having access and sight lines to the unit in the rear. I understand that it's a, a, a narrow slot or narrow site. Um, so that's going to present its own challenges. Um, but I, I do think it's, you know, it's just, it's something to be thinking about. Um, I'm not seeing any access to the roof garden in your plan. Um, unless it's. It's just something that we have figured out, but we have not updated the presentation. We we knew that was one of the conversations we've been working through, um, but we figured it out. We were have we're just updating as we go along. Gotcha. Um, yeah, yeah, look, definitely look forward to seeing that. Um, the windows in the front, I really like. I just think since they're in the stairwell, you might end up having to have them. They're pretty tall, and they might have to be tempered, um, which you know kind of adds costs and. All of that just because they're in the stairwell. So I don't know if there's a way around that just to save, 
you know, some money and kind of, um, kind of keep that sort of attractive, um, attractive, like, facade in the front. Um, I like that you're matching the, the, looks like you're matching the height, the header of the building to the left. So yes. that's, that's wonderful. Um, I, I, again, like Nia said, I, I understand why you don't have any uh, windows on the first floor because there's a stair there, but also, um, I don't know if there's there's an alternative there that might work. That there might... is. We potentially might be able. We might be able to um, bring in maybe a transom window in that area. We just have to coordinate how the stair and that wall face interacts. And obviously, as we're working through even this, because we were thinking of that concept, just really just flooding that stairwell. Right. Which if you leave, it floods all those other areas with natural light. And that was our thought process through it. But I think that's a great comment that we received is bringing that to that face, like to that force. And I do agree, like, if you look at all the trends, you do have glazing at that that area. Right. And so how we address that staircase is going to be key to that. And so we'll look into that 100% agree. Right. And, I, you know, I think it's, I think it's something that sort of creates a more welcoming vibe in the neighborhood having windows to the front and being able to see out the front and things like that it's a little bit more engaging um i worry about the wood um on the sides coming down to the ground with all of the snow and stuff that we have here um i mean i know there's not going to be tons of there's cars going up and down this driveway um and that stuff coming super close to the ground may not wear so well um and let's see, did I have any other comments? Yeah, no, I think that's pretty much it. I think it's just having some, oh, historic photos. I don't know if you've been through any processes with the city or talked to um, kind of the staff to see about like getting some historic photos to see what's there. The image that Dan uh, kind of painted for us makes it sound like it could only enhance the presentation. Um, and so, and it might even give you a little bit more inspiration for some additional moves that you can make. Um, other than that, yeah, I guess my my concern to my major concern is just about it being six inches off this off of grade as opposed to taller. Um, but yep, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, I agree uh, nearly entirely with Philip and Nia. Um, I'll go through, I think, uh, I'll add if you go to the, go to the front image or the front elevation. I, I particularly agree, oh, thank you, with having windows on the ground floor uh, throughout the neighborhood. Things built in the 90s and early 2000s have what I kind of refer to as fortress architecture, where there's not a lot going on on the ground floor and we want eyes on the street. Uh, you want to be more friendly with the neighbors. and. In keeping with the historic district, that fenestration. Uh, we often see uh, homes built at grade uh, when there's a garage in the rear and there's that obvious need, but because there is no garage attached here, I think it would be beneficial to raise the structure out of the ground and have the first floor begin uh, two or three steps up, like the neighbors on either side, and just get it off the ground floor there or get it right off of grade. Um, and then if there's a way to to integrate a porch, uh, I think that would be preferable. If not a porch, then perhaps a patio space. Um, and then I, if there's a discrepancy between, I think, the site plan and the image. Dan, if we could go to the one image advance. I just want to make sure I understand this right. Is the structure in plane in line with the more Italianate uh, to the right there? I think the bump out. Go back one more. Yep. Nope. Other direction. One more. Yeah, there. That in this rendering, it looks like the bump out exceeds the plane of the house uh, immediately to the. South. I think that's just the angle of the okay. rendering, but the plane <laughs> against the the plane of the house, but the plane of the adjacent neighbors, they're all kind of aligned the same. I won't say they're absolutely perfect, but they're pretty much existing aligned the same. Okay. I think it would be best if the bump out didn't exceed the plane of the, the house closest to it. Um, I think, uh, well, uh, Philip talked about the pine wood. I, 
where we've allowed that in the neighborhood in the past, it's not aged particularly well, felt exactly right. Uh, I would just be very cautious against that material. Uh, even there are buildings that are less than uh, five years old that it does not look very good on. Um, the, the driveway, uh, it's there, it's existing, uh, and there's no alley in the back, but I wondered if you might consider permeable pavers for the driveway instead of just asphalt or concrete. And um, the, the last comment where the stairs are located, because those windows are so big, I didn't know if, if you're walking past, if you would see the profile of the stairs as it marched up. And that's a little bit concerning. You have these, uh, they're very modern, but they're, they're well done windows. But I don't think you want to look through and then just see the profile of a stair uh, going up. If you could find a different location for those. But those are just some thoughts, and that's all I have. I I really just have one um, comment about the the front of the structure. Um, I agree with Nia that Landmarks is likely going to want um, some kind of porch on here um, because you have the first. I understand why you have the side of the building recessed um, for the driveway, but because you have the first floor, you know, in the front recessed as well. Um, I mean, green space is is great, but you're already casting a shadow on there. So I think that maybe there's an opportunity to work with kind of, you know, you have a little bit of space that isn't getting direct sunlight for a lot of the day already. Um, and I think it's really cool that there's a new construction um, to family home um, being proposed. So that's, um, you know, I don't think anyone has said that yet. So I just wanted to compliment that. Um, but oftentimes when you have two um, families or individuals living in, in a shared house, you find that they want um, kind of outdoor space where they can have their own autonomy. And so I'm not sure if the roof, the, the green space up top is going to be shared or not. But if you do have even some kind of like um, seating area or porch or something in the front, that gives the person in that front unit an opportunity to have like their own little outdoor space. So I think that it can create a little opportunity in function as, as well as, as the form that um, feels more consistent with uh, the neighborhood, but I really like the contemporary look of it. Um, I think it does a great job of, of feeling fresh and new and not um, something we've, that feels redundant compared to, you know, other new construction and um, is very complimentary. So that's really my only, my only comment. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, anybody else? Does, um, if no one else, does um, Harold, do you feel that you have gotten sufficient I've feedback? I've gotten great feedback. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, this has been really helpful for us to kind of continue and progressing this design. Um, and so I think there's some two, three key things that we will be looking deeply into trying to make sure we can answer it for you guys. Okay, great. And so, um, Dan, he's going to be at uh, Landmarks next week, I assume? That's correct. Yeah, we have you pencil in for a uh, commission meeting next week. Um, typically, you know, we ask that you give the same presentation to the commission that they saw today, so don't make any changes, just so you can get that full feedback without okay. getting confused. Yeah. Um, and then after you receive that feedback, you can kind of work on final designs. You can come back, um, you know, to the committee for concept, work with staff. Uh, or if you feel like you're ready, you can come for final approval um, when you have all that put together. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Harold. Um, we we'll look forward to seeing the uh, take care, final design. Okay. Are we with that? Yeah. I don't think we have any yeah, we other, no other agenda items. So you're free to adjourn. Great. So we will uh, today's. Historic Ohio City Design Review Advisory Committee meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you.